In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Lottie files. We see them on the page right here. We're going to add this Lottie file right here. It's going to play on a loop. As we can see, it's looping around and around. I'm going to show you where to find Lottie files for one and how to add them to the page using an add-on. These icons are also Lottie files. As I scroll, you can see the animation subtly happening. As I scroll backwards, the animations go backwards the other way, which is pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to add Lottie files in the background, like Santa Claus right here and it's snowing. As we scroll, it disappears again into the background. As I scroll back up, the snow is going back up. It doesn't work that way in nature, but we can make Lottie files work that way. As I scroll down farther, the Lottie file right down below, the young lady sitting on those books, that Lottie file does not activate until I hover into that section. You can see my mouse cursor is up at the top. I hover into this section. Now the Lottie file plays. I'll show you how to set that up. And at the very bottom, we have two separate Lottie files playing on top of each other. The Happy New Year one in the back, and the fireworks on the front. And there's one more we're gonna create at the very top of the page. You might have missed it the first time. Little hamburger icon, when I hover over it, it changes because I use one of the effects available in the Lottie Files widget. When I click on it, it opens a slide out navigation menu that's off canvas. And the X over here is also animated with the same Lottie file, just a different part of it. I'm gonna show you to use the same Lottie file and select different parts of it for different animations on your website. Click on that X and the menu closes. I'll show you how to do that as well. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And make sure you click the like button because that really helps my videos, and everybody's videos really, in the YouTube algorithm, helps us rank better and get more views and reach more people and help more people build more awesome websites. Now let's get back to this Lottie file tutorial. In my assessment, there are four main reasons why Lottie files are awesome. One is they integrate easily with Elementor using various plugins and add-ons. Two is they look great. You see one right here. This is a Lottie file. Three is Lottie files can be interacted with and programmed to do what you like. For example, if I click this boost button right here, this Lottie file, this car is going to speed up. It's going to drive a whole lot faster. And then it slows back down to the speed that it was. And that's an example of being able to interact and programmatically change how a Lottie file works on a website. Number four, the fourth reason, fourth and final reason to my assessment, is they are super lightweight. Meaning if you have a PNG file that's animated, or a GIF file that's animated, or a Lottie file that's animated, the Lottie file is a whole lot smaller as you can see right here. If I missed any reasons Lottie files are awesome, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm pretty sure I nailed the most important ones, but there's always a chance I missed something. Little fun fact before we get started, Lottie files are named after someone who is named Lottie, Lottie Reininger from Germany. She was the foremost pioneer of silhouette animation, and she created the first feature-length film that we know of, called The Adventures of Prince Ahmed, which came out or was released in 1926, which is older than Walt Disney's first feature-length film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which was released in 1937, over 10 years later. So, that's where the name came from. Last fun fact before we get started, Lottie files were created by Airbnb for the Airbnb website and they open sourced the technology and now we all get the benefit of that. And there's been a bit of an underground grassroots movement spreading Lottie files around the internet, but now they're becoming more and more mainstream because they are actually awesome. To find Lottie files that you can use, you can go to lottiefiles.com. I'm sure there's other repositories of these. This is the most well-known one. It's the one that I know of. A lot of them here are free. They have tens of thousands of free Lottie files, but they also have a marketplace where you could buy Lottie files if you wanted to. I don't think you'd need to because there's so many of the free ones and you can even make your own. If you have some After Effects skills, you can make your own Lottie files. That's the subject of another video. Anyway, on this page, you can go to animations and go to recent popular or COVID-19, which is currently a trending topic, or you can search for something. You could search for boat, for example we see a whole lot of boats appearing. And these animations are looping. We can manipulate that on the website. We can have them go loop one time or just play one time, play when they're clicked or hovered on or when you're scrolling. We'll get into that. But right now, suffice it to say, there's a lot of animations. If you click on any one of them, like this one, for example, you see more options. The options we care about today are the download JSON. If I click on here, then choose Lottie JSON, we have to log in or create an account if you have not logged in. The accounts are free, but you do have to have one to download the JSON file. So I'm just gonna log into my account. 
And to get this onto our site, we're going to use a plugin. There's a free plugin you can use in the WordPress repository. It has a few options, but not that many. And I'm going to use a paid plugin called the Plus Add-ons. It has over 120 different features and widgets. I've covered all of them in a tutorial linked to in the card above in the description down below. It's an amazing plugin, but it also has a lot of integration with way more options than the free one you'll find in the repository. But the process is kind of similar when you use either one. So you can follow along if you want to use the free one or the plus add-ons, but I recommend the plus add-ons because there's more options and that allows you to do more things. So in the plugins here, all we have installed right now is the plus add-ons for Elementor, Elementor and Elementor Pro. And once we have the plus add-ons installed, we have to do two things in particular. Let's go to the plus settings, go to plus widgets. We have to make sure that on here we have Lottie files turned on. I'm just going to search for them. There's a lot of widgets here, like I said. Here, Lottie file animations. You want to make sure this one is toggled on. You can toggle on and off any one that you want in here. And we have to go to the extra options and scroll down to the very bottom and make sure Lottie files backend JS is turned on. That allows us to view the Lottie file as we're creating our Elementor pages in the backend and set this to at least 30, this little field right here, and then click save. And now we're going to go to our page. I created a simple page called Lottie Files Demo. I'm going to edit with Elementor. I've loaded in just a regular Elementor template from the Elementor template library. And I used the canvas so we don't have the menu at the top. And it's just the template. Now we're going to add a bunch of Lottie files to this page and see how they work with the plus add-on settings. What I want to do is replace this image right here with an animated one. And I have a bunch of results or a bunch of tabs open at the top. These are just Lottie file pages. So everybody who submits a file to Lottie Files has a profile. This is Istvan, and this, these are Lottie Files he's uploaded, and it shows them on his profile page. So when you're in the search results, you can see, let's go back to the search results for the boat. If I can get there, I think I can get there. I got there. So here it shows the boat, and below them has the thumbnail and a person's name. If you click on the person's name, it shows all the Lottie Files they've submitted to lottiefiles.com. You can use any one of these as long as you're not part of the marketplace. So I want to use this one right here, the shop. So if I click on there and then choose download JSON, body JSON, downloads right here, click on the up arrow, click on open. And this will open, in my case, in Sublime Text. In your case, it might open in Sublime Text or a different text editor or Firefox or Google Chrome. It's going to open somewhere. Then you want to press Command or Control A to select all, and Command or Control C to copy. Then go into Elementor, look up Lottie in the widgets, drag and drop it over, paste it in. Right here, which is JSON code, we paste in all that code we just copied, and we select Load in Backend. And now we see our file loading right there. I'm going to delete this one. And now we have a great looking little JSON animation right in our page. Super simple. We just copy and pasted that in. If I click on it, we have more options. So under main settings, we can choose to autoplay, which means it just plays all the time like it's doing now. We can have it play on hover. So as a mouse hovers over it, it'll play. And then it will loop continuously after that because loop animation is on. You can also have it on hover so it only plays once when you hover and it plays right to the end of animation, whatever that end happens to be. If the end happens to be the shop disappears, then that's the end of the animation. That's the animation on Lottie files. So it depends on how the creator created it. Luckily, inside here, if the animation ends too early, which we'll see in some of the examples as we go, then we can actually change the start time and end times, specifically the end time, to stop the animation before it disappears. So it stays on the page. Anyway, this is on hover. We can also play on click. And we can also play on column hover. As we can see, this is a column area. If I hover on this column, it doesn't hover. If I hover on this column, it does hover. We can also hover on section. So if I scroll down a bit, you see my mouse is on lower sections, not on the top section. As soon as I hover into the top section anywhere, the animation will play. We can also have a mouse in effect, it's one of my favorites, because it as you leave, it goes backwards. So you have your mouse over, it starts appearing, and then it plays backwards when your mouse leaves. I think that one's really cool. Also have a scroll parallax, which means it appears as you scroll. 
This is a poor example because this isn't where I want to design that example, but this is what happens. It'll play backwards and forwards as you're scrolling. And you can also have viewport based, which means the animation will not start playing until it enters your viewport. So if you have the animation set so it appears halfway down the page, it will not start playing until it's within your viewport. So a person could spend 15 minutes on the top half of the page, but that animation is not playing at all until they get down to the specific spot where it exists. And that's the power of the viewport option. I'm going to choose for the top one, autoplay. Just have it playing over and over because I'll loop it. It's going to play over and over on the top of the page like that. And for the animation speed, you can make it faster, slower, whatever you want there. And the custom start time and end time. We'll get to that in a different example. You can have a URL associated with it. So if someone clicks on the animation, they can go to that URL, but you can delay the click. So for example, if they click right now, we put a URL in here, like, like this website, for example, put the URL in there and the click delay right now is 1000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds. And that will be when the click happens. So if you click now, that'll give it time for the animation to play. And then the click will go through. What you probably want to do here is not have this go far beyond the animation. To find the time of the animation, go back to bodyfiles.com and we can see in the bottom corner here, really small, it says 151. That is the length of this animation in milliseconds. So you can come back here and put in 151 and then it will play right at the end of this animation. But you also notice this animation is at the completed stage right now. It's not going to change anymore after this stage. That's only 83 milliseconds into the animation. So we could change this to 83 because that's when the animation actually ends. Even though the animation file goes longer, there are no more changes beyond that time. So that's how we do the click. I'm not gonna turn that on. You can have a heading and a description if you want. I'm not gonna turn those on. You can choose how to render it, SVG, Canvas, or HTML, Canvas being a CSS3 element and HTML5 also having animation capabilities. I stick with the SVGs. That's the main settings for any Lottie files we're going to add to our website. We'll be going a lot faster when we add the next ones because I'm not going to go through all these settings every time. Layout options, we could choose left, right, center. I said those in the wrong order, but you know what I mean. We can change the width like that. We can change the height if that's relevant to whatever particular file you're using. You can change these based on device type as well. So if I wanted it much smaller on tablet and then much bigger on phone, you can do that. Back to desktop, put it back up to 100%. And those are our options for the Lottie file content. There is another option that we're going to use for the on scroll method. I'll show you a bit later. But suffice it to say, those are the options inside the widget. And now we're going to carry on. So we've added that one at the top. I want to animate these icons because icons are great. They're very popular on websites. There are SVG draw icons available in the plus add-ons plugin as well, but I'm going to use Lottie file add-ons or Lottie file animations. Another animator I found named Jesus has a bunch that look just like this. These purple background ones. I really like them. I'm going to click on the shield and choose download JSON, download Lottie JSON, downloads it, opens it. I'm going to copy this. You can hear my computer fan going because the Lottie files, although they are a lot smaller in size, when I'm on a page where we have 20 of them playing all at once, it does use quite a few resources. So my computer fan kicks in while I'm doing this. Let's look up Lottie files again. So hopefully it's not too disturbing, that fan. Paste the code in there, load in the back end, and boom, there it is. I'm going to change the size a little bit. Make it a little bit smaller, layout options. A little bit smaller. I'm gonna uh, copy the text here and then delete that and just add text like that. Now we have our little icon created and it's pretty slick, I must say. 
And as I was playing around, I found that you can't easily copy these elements. So if I try to copy this or duplicate it, duplicate works. But when I copy and paste it, watch what happens. Copy that column, paste it over here. We have the animation double up in here and not go over here. I don't know why. So I stick with duplicating. I'm going to copy and paste the original code back in here properly. And there we go. And now I'm just going to edit this one by adding a different code. So let's take this one right here. Download the JSON. It's getting to be pretty old hat now. You just find the one you like. You copy the code into here and boom, it's in. Let's get one more. I like, I like this one. Download that and open it, copy it. Let's duplicate this. Click on the Lottie file widget, paste the new one in. It always says JSON not working as it's loading, but it, it works just fine. And then we go delete on all the other columns and delete and delete. Now we've got pretty slick icons here. I think anyway, I think they're pretty slick. Maybe I want to have these not operate all the time, but just on scroll. So let's change that. Let's go to the main settings from autoplay. We're going to choose scroll parallax instead. You can see over here the animation is stopped and as we scroll nothing's happening because it's based on custom height right now by default and we see it appear as we get down to the very bottom. That's not how I like it. You can change the offset to get this to work exactly how you want it but um, I don't like how it appears and disappears so I'm going to choose instead of custom height document height. So now it starts playing at the very top of the document. And as you go down, it keeps on playing until you scroll past it. So that's the option I like to choose for that. I'm going to choose that for the other ones as well. I'm going to choose, where is it? Scroll, parallax, document height, and this one too. Scroll, parallax, and document height. And now as we scroll, we can see the animations are running. When we stop scrolling, they stop. Scroll some more, they run again. Scroll backwards, and the animations play backwards. I think that's a pretty cool look for those icons. Let's go down to here. Let's replace this one. And I'm going to replace it with this young lady right here. Down the JSON file. Open it. Copy. Add the Lottie file widget, paste it in there, paste in the JSON code, load in the back end, boom, we're done. That's how fast it goes. Delete the original image, and now we have our Lottie file. For this, I'm going to change the settings so it just runs on a section hover. Because if I have it on hover, there's no guarantee they're going to hover over this element, and they might not see or cool animation, which we want them to see. On column hover, same thing, because the element takes the whole column. So I'm going to have it on section. So as we hover into this section, they'll see it. And it can loop from then on. That's fine by me. And I like it. The next thing I want to show you is how to use Lottie files to have them behind layers. And then as you're scrolling, they might come out from behind those layers, and you can see them and they're parallaxing, meaning the animation is playing as you're scrolling. And at some points, the animation follows with you. At some points, it doesn't. Hopefully, that made sense. I think it'll make more sense when you see what I'm doing. I'm going to duplicate this section. I'm going to change the margins. There's no gap. I'm going to create another section. I'm going to move this up to be in between these two. I'm going to give it a custom height of... 900. There we go. And this is where animation is going to appear. So as we're scrolling, we're not going to see it. As you come down here, it's going to pop into view and it'll disappear again as we scroll down here. And I want to do this with the rocket ship because I like this rocket ship. 
I wasn't able to click on it earlier. I still can't click on it. They can't find my rocket ship. This happens sometimes. For some reason, things are removed and they don't work as they should. So let's find a different one. Maybe some of these other ones that I have open already. Here's a rocket ship, but it has the landscape and background stuff. I don't want backgrounds. I just want a clear background like these ones here, transparent background. So that one's not going to work. I'm just going to use this Christmas one. Why not? Download JSON. Open it. Copy all that and put the Lottie file right in here. Paste the code in, load in the back end. And we have Santa Claus with the trees blowing in the breeze and a little bit of snow coming down. That's pretty cool. Great for a Christmas theme, which is not now, it's almost summertime, but anyway. Change the scroll parallax, and now it's gonna animate as we scroll. And that's what I want. But I also want it to go behind other elements. So I'm gonna go to advanced. I'm gonna go to positioning. I'm gonna change the position to fixed. And now it's gonna scroll with us. You can see it come with us right now but it's only half the animation. It's not what we want. And now that we have fixed the positioning to, or changed the positioning to fixed, it's hard to click on. That's not great either. Let's change this back to default. We'll change the positioning last at the very end. So to get this back or to have it not appear halfway, we need to use the document height. And this will make the animation or position the animation right in the middle of the screen, which is what we want. And we want to change the Z index. So I'm going to click on the section settings, go to advanced, make sure the Z index is the lowest on the page. I'm going to make it zero. I'm going to make this Z index bigger. I'm going to make it one. Every other Z index has to be larger than the one that you want to hide behind. This is basically a stacking order. If you think of a, a stack of papers on your desk, the lowest paper is a Z index of zero. The next paper up, Z index of one or anything higher than zero, then the next paper on top of that one has a Z index higher than the previous one. In my case, it'd be two. And that's how you can visualize Z index. At least that's how I do it. So now we have all the Z indexes set. Now let's go back and change this again from default position to fixed. And I thought we changed the document. We did. Still not quite where I want it. Let's see if we had changed the size. Let's change the size. That's a bit better. Okay, so now as we scroll, we see it's behind. But these top ones, it's not displaying how we want it to because these top ones don't have a background color. So let's add a background color of white. And then Santa Claus will be gone. Background color of white on that one. And now as we scroll, there's no Santa Claus there is here because that's a margin. Let's get rid of that margin. Make that zero. Oh, not 500, zero. So now Santa Claus is still there. He's just hiding behind all the other elements. There he is. He's appeared, disappeared behind this one, disappeared behind this one, and he's back here again because there's no color on this one. Let's change the color to white, the background color. And now, to the very bottom too. This is not part of the live page. This is just the Elementor editor where you can add new sections. So now we have Santa Claus appearing just where we want him. And the animation runs forwards and backwards depending on which direction you scroll. You don't have to put this in the background either. As we saw, the scrolling effect works on stationary icons like these ones here, or stationary Lottie files like these icons. We scroll and they run backwards and forwards. There's another thing I want to show you. I want to show you two Lottie files stacked on top of each other, which I think would be a pretty cool effect. I haven't tried this before, but I think it'll work. Let's test it out. So let's make a new section. Let's give it a background color of white to make Santa Claus hide behind it. And let's put in the Lottie file widget. And I'm going to add in 
Where is it? This one right here. It's a little outdated. This is the transition from 2019 to 2020. Happy New Year. But we're going to use it anyway. It's not really outdated. It's still 2020, but it's, it's, it's long past New Year's. So we paste in the code here. We load it in the back end. And here we have our animation playing. Gonna make it a little smaller under the layout options. And what I want to do is have a Lottie file play on top of this. It's going to add another Lottie file, another section with another Lottie file. And it is going to have a clear background and it's going to be from the same gentleman, I believe. Nope, not from the same one. This guy right here. It's kind of party streamers flying up in the air. So we have it open in the bottom, not open, in the bottom. We open it, copy the JSON code, paste it in there, load on the back end. Here we have our party streamers, something you'd expect to see on New Year's. Let's make this a little smaller. It actually has a white background, so this one's not going to work how I wanted it to because I want to move this over top of this one here. Maybe we can change the blend options. So let's just move this up as far as we can. Let's not have the bottom negative margin. Let's just do the top negative margin. Uh, there we go. Now it's right on top of the other one, right on top of the, the New Year's one. So this one's not going to work how I want it because it has a white background. So I'm going to pause it and find another one without a white background because those are the ones I've been finding the most useful for my purposes anyway. So I'm going to pause this. Find a different one with no white background. Okay, I'm back and I found these fireworks explosions on lottiefiles.com by Omar and it does not have a white background. That's what we want. So I'm going to move this up over top. Go to the section settings. Move this up over top of this 2020 Happy New Year. So let's go minus 600. getting there. Minus 900. There we go. Now let's change the size. So it's a bit smaller. Size of the Lottie file or Lottie animation. There we go. Now we have two Lottie animations playing on top of each other, which I think is pretty neat. The trouble is with this effect you have to use a lot of negative margin. So this makes it hard or impossible, I should say, to select the element behind it without moving the top element back down or messing with the Z indexes, which can get tedious and painful. But if you're dedicated, you can make this work. Two Lottie files, or even more than that, playing on top of each other, just like this. There are many more use cases for the plus add-ons and Lottie files, but I just wanna show you one more application. I'm gonna use a hamburger menu or create a hamburger menu where someone clicks on the menu icon which is going to be this animation here. We're going to use the hamburger portion of it. Somebody clicks on it, and it's going to open a slide out menu. Then we're going to use the X portion that they can then use to close that slide out menu. So to do this, we're going to add a new section. I'm going to put it to the very top of the page. I'm just going to drag and drop that right up to the top. And then I'm going to add Lottie files, Lottie file widget. I can drop that right there. Then get the Lottie file from here. Or get the JSON code, I mean. Open this. Copy that. Paste it in here and turn on load in backend. And now we have our Lottie file right here. It is huge, as you can see. Let's shrink that down. Let's go to layout options. Shrink it down to about, that size is pretty good. This blue line you see in these little bubbles, that is the Santa Claus animation that you can see down here. So we don't want to have that in the background of our Lottie file. So we're going to make this background color for this section, we're going to make it white. Like so, and then change the Z index to anything over zero. 
let's make that one. And now the Santa Claus is in the back and it's gone. We're also gonna move this audio file to the right or align it to the right. And we're gonna add some negative margin just because the spacing in the slotty file is not quite how I'd want it. So let's add some negative margin to the top to move it up. There we go. Let's add some to the bottom to, to bring the bottom part up a little higher so there's not so much white space. Now we want to limit the animation to be just the hamburger when it shrinks down to the single line, and that's it. So to do that, let's go back to original one on the Lottie Files website, and let's take a look at where this animation exists. So I want to have the hamburger icon. It shrinks down to being just one. So 15 milliseconds is what we'll use. To do this, I click on the Lottie file, make sure it's selected. I have a bunch on the page. I want to select the wrong one and apply this to the wrong Lottie file going to go to main settings, start animation, or custom animation start time, zero, custom animation end time of 15. And I also want to change this to be on hover. So the animation will play when it hovers, and I'm not going to make it loop. So we hover over it, the animation plays. I'm going to change this to mouse in out effect. like that better for this one. So it goes, it shrinks as you mouse over, goes back to the hammer icon as you mouse away. I like that. Okay, so now we have that effect in place for this page. We want to create the actual pop-up menu. I'm going to press update so we save our changes. And with Elementor Pro, we can create pop-ups under templates. I already created one. I'm going to open this to show you how it looks. And here it is right here on the right-hand side. And this was built using a process very similar to the video in the card up above and the description down below. I show you in the video how to create these pop-out menus in great detail. So I'm not going to show you how to build it in this video. I'm just going to show you to add the Lottie file functionality. What we're going to do in this video, we're going to replace this little X icon. I'll show you how it works right now. So if I go back into our page where we're adding this, make sure I click on the Lottie file. Under main settings, I'm going to turn URL on. Change the type from normal to dynamic. For the URL, I'm going to click on the database dynamic tags icon there and choose pop up. Then when I click on pop up, you can choose to open a pop up. This is the action that that button does. So in this case, we do want it to open a pop up when someone clicks. You can also have a close a pop up and toggle a pop up. So I'm going to choose open. Which pop up? I'm going to write in here or start writing the name of it. It's an off canvas template pop up. I don't know why that just popped up to there. Now we have our pop-up populated here. It's a lot of popping going on. And now if I update this, I can go and view the page, the live page, click on the icon, our pop-up menu appears, click on the X, and it closes. But now I want to have that X be a little more dynamic, have it be animated with our Lottie files. In fact, the exact same Lottie file, just a different section of it. So let's go back into this page, and let's add a new section. Click on the plus icon, I'm going to drag a widget in here. It's going to be the Lottie file widget, as you probably guessed. Drag that right in there. I'm going to use the same code from this Lottie file just to prove it to you. I'm not going to get it from the website. I'm going to get it right from here. Copy that and paste it in here. Load in the back end, and there we have it. Let's close this. Let's change the size. Make it smaller, float it to the right. Now we have the file here. We want to also add a custom start time and a custom end time. So the start time is going to be, let's start it here on the X. So let's make it 33. And the custom end time is going to be when the X goes down to, this keeps on starting to play. The flat. Let's make that 55. There we go. And I'm going to have this also be mouse in out effect, which I find works best for this kind of effect. Let's not loop the animation. And now we have up here, we can see if I, when I hover over, the X appears. 
I wish you could run the Lottie files in reverse because it makes more sense to have that be a line and then you hover over it and the X comes. Because this kind of looks like the X is hiding as you hover over it. Anyhow, we have that there. Now the URL, I'm going to turn that on, type the dynamic, dynamic tags, pop up. We're going to choose, instead of open pop up like we did earlier, we're going to choose close pop up. Now, when someone clicks on that, it's going to close the pop up. Last thing we have to do is get rid of this X, the black one, which is what Elementor adds in. Go to the gear icon and turn off close button, and now it's gone. And also maybe change these margins a little bit. This is not so important. This is just for vanity's sake, I guess. Site navigation has got a lot of space on top. There we go. So that's all done. And like I mentioned, I have a complete tutorial showing you how to build one of these off canvas menus, which are pretty slick. Link to in the card above and the description down below. Let's update this. Not going to have any display conditions. Let's click on save and close because we have this added directly to this page here. If I refresh this page, then we click on the hamburger icon and we have our site navigation and it's not quite how we want it to look. So let's add some more space at the top. So come back out here for the navigation, in fact, the body file itself. Let's add some margin at the top. And something I forgot to do, and I'll show you the mistake first so you know what it is when you, when you happen to do it as well, possibly. Come back out here, refresh after saving that, click on the hamburger, and we see the X isn't there. Why that happens is because there is an option inside the Lottie files, inside all of them that you may have seen earlier, called Elementor Pop-Up. So when the Lottie file is in the pop-up, I want to turn this on. Update. Save and close. Come back out here. Refresh. Now I open the pop-up. And there's our fancy X. Click on the X. And it closes our pop-up. Click on the hamburger and it opens. Click on the X and it closes. There's another use case for how you can use Lottie files on your website to make it highly customized. If you like what you saw in this video, make sure you check out the Plus Add-ons plugin. This is the website right here. It's linked to in the description down below. Click on that. You will come here. You can go through all of the widgets that are available, all of the listing types that are available, all the extras that are added to other existing widgets in WordPress, all the design options, extra templates, extra UI blocks. All of these, there's over 120 of them in total of these options and widgets and design features. There's a lot. There's another tutorial in the card up above in the description down below. It shows you a walkthrough of all of them that I did recently. So make sure you check it out. Lottie are these ones right here. Lottie file animations and Lottie files on scroll. That's kind of what we covered in this tutorial. And there's a whole lot more to this plugin as you can see. So make sure you check it out. I'm sure you agree, Lottie files are pretty awesome, and the Plus Add-ons plugin allows you to add them to your website really easily. Check out this tutorial here where I cover all of the features and widgets in the Plus Add-ons plugin. There are a lot. And if you like this video, please click the like button because it helps in the YouTube rankings and YouTube algorithm, and make sure you share it if you found this video useful. Share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever it is that you share. Please share it, it really helps. Then click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.